This is Roger Struckoff with Syscon TV. We're at Cloud Expo in the year 2014, believe it or not, in Silicon Valley. I'm sitting with Roberto Madrano of SOA Software. Uh, we've interviewed him many, many times over the years. And what we'd like to do today is talk a little bit about evolution, for lack of a better word, how have things changed for your business over the past year and over the past two years? Well, I wrote an article in 2012 on Forbes about the API economy. And at that time, a lot of people were asking me, what are APIs? Today, people are actually talking. We have an API for this, we have an API for that. We have APIs. And now they're asking, okay, how do I get more developers or more other companies to use my APIs? And that's how we help them. How do I secure my APIs? How do I monitor, manage my APIs? How do I control the design cycle of APIs? So everything is more mature. You know, I was just on a panel. We talked a little bit about disconnects within organizations, not the technology providers, but the customers. So you talk about the API economy uh, at, a, at a high level a couple of years ago. You're getting through to the technical people and on up to the architects. But still, how do you get through this term? API still has to confuse people at, at some high level of a company. Why is it important to them? How do you get that through to them? Well, I think what people are learning that, for example, Google connects through APIs to many things. Facebook connects through APIs to many things. Uh, Netflix connects to APIs to different providers of services for them. So people are learning from these new companies that started from the API. They had no legacy. So now they're API, everything is in the cloud. So they learn and they want to emulate some of those things to connect through APIs to be more agile. So because of that, Everybody's a little bit more knowledgeable of the API world, what APIs are. Now, it is true that there's two types of people. One is the IT people that want to do APIs for something internal within the API. And there's the product manager people that want to do some uh, outside APIs for people to connect to them. And those are business product managers, marketing people that want other people. Imagine Netflix that wants to get other providers to connect to their APIs. Those are business guys. Imagine uh, Bank of America, for example, that wants to do APIs internally to connect the infrastructure to the new apps. That's internal for the IT. There's two different groups, but everybody's more knowledgeable now. Speaking of knowledgeable, it, it occurred to me uh, about services. So SOA at one term was radical thinking. Um, and now, have we gotten to the point where, or at what point, what percentage of people have gotten to the point where they now think of services as software, as that's what's developed instead of applications. You know, have we gotten to that point finally where just the notion of a services-oriented architecture is so commonsensical that, that they can move beyond? Well, the thing that helped quite a bit was the cloud. When people start talking about the cloud, they start talking about cloud services. And in some cases, services for the cloud were something bigger applications. But slowly, more people talking about applications, they're talking about APIs, services out there. And APIs are a service. It's part of the service-oriented architecture. And the people that go to those principles, which are SOA principles, they're the best guys to create an infrastructure that is good for cloud, good for mobile, good for IoT, and good for the DevOps, which is what this conference is all about. But with cloud, uh, how are people thinking about cloud? There's this issue of control that keeps coming up. Are you hearing much about the public-private hybrid sort of debate? What, you know, um, what sort of conversations do you have about that? Well, for us, the cloud at the beginning, five, uh, many years ago, yeah. a lot of people were talking about public. But since we, sell, we started selling to a lot of banks, a lot of health organizations, those people did not want to put a lot of data on the cloud. So they wanted to put something on premise. So we started selling to people on premise quite a bit. So we have 300 of the Fortune 1000 companies. A lot of them were on premise, but lately over the last 12 to 18 months, now we have a series of people that have hybrids. They have on premise something with a gateway, for example, and they have a community manager or portal up there to do connectivity with uh, B2B partners or with other people they want to connect to or just whomever they want, for example. So that's working now. And then finally, the IoT, how's the Internet of Things uh, affecting your business? Well, IoT is even more dramatic because uh, some of us go beyond APIs. So if you think about services, 
Service Oriented Architecture will start with web services, then uh, it's being used by, through the mobile revolution, uh, start used with REST. Now IoT is using other protocols, and partially REST, to communicate device to device. And those have authorization principles, identity, uh, 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 identification principles, right. identity management principles, that you need to follow, and you don't have a lot of space. So you have small little things that have to manage, they have to secure, they have to be monitored. All those principles that we do for services, for APIs, for IoT, it's even more dramatic. The high-level word that comes to mind to me is ecosystem, but with tremendous low-level technical complications. Um, uh, how do you deal with this, this idea of an ecosystem? How much can you provide? How do you work with different companies? Well, a lot of companies are creating their own APIs. They need an ecosystem of some things. They need yeah. providers that they need to communicate to. Uh, banks need providers. Health uh, inf uh, organizations need all the providers they need to communicate. Uh, new companies like uh, Netflix need to communicate with their new providers and new people that do uh, subscribe to the services, for example, through different channels. Mm -hmm. So all those things are part of the the new API world, the API economy that I keep on calling it. The API economy, the API economy was here in 2012. It's still here. It's going to be here, I think, the next time we talk to you. We've been sitting for a few minutes with Roberto Medrano of SOA Software. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching. For Syscon TV, this is Roger Struckoff.